Hi everyone, I'm Xin Yan Hu from Peking University. I will be presenting our paper on Nash convergence of mean-based learning algorithms in first price auctions. This is a joint work with Xiao Tie Deng from Peking University, Tao Ling from Harvard University, and Wei Changzheng from Yale University. Our problem arises from the scenario of online advertising auctions, where some advertisers would bid for the ad slots which are displayed in the website through some auctions. One current trend of online advertising auction is the first price auction. So what's the first price auction? It means the bidder who bids the highest wins the item and pays its own bid. Let's see an example in Google ad auction. Let's say two advertisers, L Canada and Triple L, are bidding for the first ad slot on this Google page on the first price auction. And their value towards the ad slots is $800 and $600. Then what will they bid? Will Air Canada bid its true value $800? The answer is no. When Air Canada knows the triple L's value is $600. Since the triple L's will not bid higher than its true value $600, if Air Canada bids $601, it can still win the slot and pay less in the meanwhile. But the question is, how L Canada know triple L's value? Actually, in reality, the advertisers may know little about other advertisers' values before they participate in the auctions. What happens in reality is that the advertisers may use online learning algorithms to learn to bid. So what will the bidders be if they use online learning algorithms? Will they converge to an equilibrium in the first price auction? Our main contribution in this paper is showing that a wide class of online learning algorithms will converge to a Nash equilibrium in the first price auction under some assumption on bidders' values. Here is our model of learning in first price auction. There are n bidders and a single item sold by a single seller. For each bidder i, it has a fixed value vi towards the single item and runs an online learning algorithm satisfying the mean based property to learn to bid in the first price auction. And these are two key assumptions in our model, which I will talk later. We also assume that the online learning algorithm may run for an infinite number of runs. This captures the scenario where bidders do not know how long they will be in the repeated auctions. And so they use the algorithms that work for an arbitrary unknown number of rounds. At each round t, each bidder i gets a bid bti from its algorithm to submit to the auction. We suppose that all the values and bids are in a discrete space, normalized to a bounded non-negative integer space. And then a first price auction is run, given the bids submitted by the bidders. As a result, there is one winner who is the bidder that bids the highest. And if there are multiple bidders bidding the same highest bid, the winner is one of them who is chosen uniformly at random. The winner will pay its own bid and get a utility that is equal to its value minus its own bid while any other bidders will get zero utility in this round. So all the bidders get some feedback from this round of auction to update their algorithms. Note that we don't assume specific feedback model in our paper, and we just assume a mean based property of the learning algorithm. After updating the algorithm, the bidder may change its bidding strategy in the next round. So our question is, whether their bidding strategy will eventually converge to a Nash equilibrium of the one-shot first price auction. As I mentioned, we assume the learning algorithm has a mean-based property, which was proposed by Brewerman et al. in 2018. So what's the mean-based property? We let alpha t i b be the average utility of bidder i if it bid b in the first two rounds. And we say that a learning algorithm is gamma t mean based if the left hand side can imply the right hand side here. 
the left hand side says a sufficiently large gap between two average utilities of beta i if bidding b prime and b in the first t minus one rounds. And the right hand side says the small probability that beta i will be b. This intuitively says that in each round, the algorithm chooses a bid with low probability if the average utility of the bid in the history is much worse than the average utility of the optimal bid in the history. The algorithm satisfying mean based property is a wide class of online learning algorithms that include a greedy algorithm and many well known no regret learning algorithms such as Epsilon Greedy and Multiplicative Weights Update. Another key assumption in our model is the bidders have fixed values across the whole time horizon. And this is the deterministic setting. Actually, in real life online advertising auction scenarios, auctions sometimes happen frequently, which means a large number of auctions may happen during a short amount of time and the bidder's value might not change dramatically in such a short time. So we say the fixed value assumption is quite a realistic assumption. Another setting is the stochastic setting, where bidder's values are IID drawn from fixed distributions each round. Fong et al. in 2021 has studied the convergence of mean-based learning in first price auction with two symmetric bidders having the uniform value distribution. This is still a special case of the stochastic setting. And it's definitely interesting to explore the general case. However, there is no explicit characterization of the Bayesian Nash equilibrium in the first price auction for general asymmetric distributions. This makes the equilibrium learning problem even more difficult. And as far as we have known, the uniform IID distribution results is the only result so far for the stochastic setting. Going back to a deterministic setting, our work makes a leap to the case of arbitrary number of asymmetric bidders in the first class auction. With the fixed value assumption, we can clarify the Nash equilibrium of the one shot first class auction. We order the bidders by their values decreasingly we say their M bidders have the same highest value V1 to Vm. We call them the highest value bidders. And they'll follow bidder M plus one to M prime, having the second highest value if exist. We call them the second highest value bidders. We can assume without loss of generality that each bidder be strictly smaller than its own value. Then there are roughly three cases of Nash equilibrium based on M, which is the number of the highest value bidders. Intuitively, whenever more than one bidders have the highest value, they should compete with each other by bidding V1 minus one or V1 minus two, which is the case of the first two rows. And it is only when M equals to two and no other bidders are able to compete with them that they will bid V1 minus two which is shown in the second row. And for the last case that M equals to one, the unique highest value bidder, we say bidder one, will compete with the second highest value bidders. So the bidder one will bid the second highest value V2. And there should exist at least one second highest value bidder bidding V2 minus one in the Nash equilibrium. Those are the main parts of the Nash equilibrium omitting the corner cases and the bids of all other bidders, since all other bidders can bid arbitrarily in the Nash equilibrium. And so will they converge to one of the Nash equilibrium? And how will they converge in these different cases? Before I dive into our results, let me introduce two notions of convergence to Nash equilibrium in our paper. Actually, previous results on the convergence of learning dynamics to Nash equilibrium in games are mostly attempted in an average sense. For example, the empirical distribution of bidder speeds. Our notion of 10 average convergence says the bidders play a Nash equilibrium in almost every round. And it is different from the convergence of empirical distributions 
Actually, our notion is stronger, at least for the case that the Nash equilibrium is unique. But the time average convergence fails to capture the full picture of the dynamics since the beta's last iterate strategy may not converge. This leads us to further think about the last iterate convergence that beta's mixed strategy profile approaches the Nash equilibrium. So we fully characterize the Nash convergence properties in terms of these two kinds of notions. And we show the differences are based on the different cases of beta's values. And here is our main results. Recall that we define M equals to the number of bidders with the same highest value B1. Specifically, we prove that any mean-based learning algorithms will lead to the Nash convergence if M is more than one. If M is more than two, we prove that they will almost surely converge both in the time average and last iterates. But if M is exactly two, we only improve the time average convergence, but find a counterexample that do not converge in the last iterate sense. Notice that the almost surely convergence means they will converge with probability one. However, for the third row, if M is only one, we also construct an interesting counterexample to show that they may not converge either in last iterate nor in time average. Besides, our experiments of epsilon greedy and multiplicative with updates, which are typical no regret mean based algorithms, also show that they may not converge in this case. Then let me highlight our proof of the convergence results, which I think is the most exciting part of our work. Let's record the definition of mean based property. Intuitively, if a bit B is dominated by another bit B prime, then the probability of choosing this B is no greater than a small constant. This means that a mean-based algorithm won't pick a dominated strategy with a large probability. So the convergence may be straightforward if there is a dominant strategy. Unfortunately, we know that there is no dominant strategy in the first price auction. But the good thing is, we find first price auction with fixed values and more than two highest value bidders can be solved by iterative elimination of dominated strategies, which has also been implicitly spelled out by Holmes Snell and Modero in 1998. For our proof sketch, let's think about an example where there are three bidders all having a same integer value V1 and choosing their bits from the sets 0, 1 up to V1 minus 1. The Nash equilibrium here is all bidders bidding V1 minus 1. And the elimination process is as follows. Firstly, bidding 0 is dominated by bidding 1 for each of the three bidders, no matter what other bidders bid. So bidders will learn to bid 1 or higher instead of bidding 0. Then. Given that no bidders bid zero, bidding one is dominated by bidding two. So all bidders learn to bid at least two. In this way, all the bidders learn to bid V1 minus one eventually. However, there's a key challenge in the proof due to the randomness of the algorithms. Recall the definition of mean based again. The algorithm may pick a dominated strategy with a positive probability. So additional argument is needed to show that bidders will finally converge to V1 minus one with a high probability. Our key technique is a combination of time partitioning and Azuma's inequality, which is also a key idea in Fong's work. To conclude my talk, here are some takeaways. Firstly, we say that any mean-based learning algorithms will lead to the Nash convergence in the first price auction with bidders having fixed values, and if there are more than one highest value bidders. Otherwise, if there is only one unique highest value bidder, mean-based learning algorithms may not always converge. Accordingly, there are some interesting future directions. For the convergence results, we'd like to ask about the open problem about the convergence rates. And for the non-convergence results, will they never converge or 
are there any kinds of more restrictive algorithms that will converge? And besides all of this, it is definitely interesting to think about the Bayesian setting of the first price auction. That's all for my talk. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Xinyan, for the very nice talk and the interesting paper, actually. I read it at some point before. Um, but yeah, let's take uh, time for maybe one question, if the audience has any questions. So if not, I, I just have uh, one brief question. So uh, maybe you didn't mention this in the talk, but in the paper, I saw you have some uh, some practical studies that you did on real data. So do you know if there are uh, significant differences in how quickly two different mean-based algorithms will actually converge to equilibrium? Um, actually, in our paper, we, we didn't study the convergence rate. So that's I why I asked the open problem here. Yeah. OK, OK. Uh, I just, yes, OK. <laughs>